Hi. Hi. Maya. Okay. <laughs> that was one of my non-visual kids. Hi, Maya. Okay. I thought I was supposed to say hi. <laughs> my name is Wayne Powell, and I'm going to be walking you through this session. You probably already know, but let me explain why we come here today. We're testing a website that we're working on to see what it's like for actual people to use it. I want to make it clear right, right away that we're, work we're testing the site and not you. You can't do anything wrong here. In fact, this is probably one place today where you won't have to worry about making mistakes. We want to hear exactly what you think, so please don't worry that you're going to hurt our feelings. We want to improve it, so we need to know honestly what you, what you think. As we go along, I'm going to ask you to think out loud, okay? And so you tell me what's going on in your, in your mind. This will help us. If you have any questions, just ask. I may not be able to answer them right away, since we're interested in how people do when they when they don't have someone sitting next to them, but I'll try to answer your questions you still have when we're done. We have a lot to do, and I'm gonna to try to keep us moving, but we'll try to make sure that it's fun too. You may have noticed the camera. With your permission, we're going to videotape the computer screen and have and what you have to say. The video will be only used to help us figure out how to improve the site, and it won't be used or seen by anyone except the people working on the project. It also helps me because I don't have to take as many notes. There are also people watching the video in another room, potentially. And in this case, it may be recorded for other purposes. <laughs> if you would, I'm going to ask you to sign something for us. It simply says that we're going to have your permission to tape you, but that it will only be seen by people working on this project. It also says that you won't talk to anybody about what you're showing here today since it hasn't been made public yet. Do you have any questions before we begin? Okay. So now I'm moving on from the welcome part to the question part. Before we look at the site, I'd like to ask you a few questions. First, what's your occupation? Uh, student. Good. Now, roughly how many hours a week would you say you s spend using the internet, including email? But let's say 50. Okay. How do you spend that time? In a typical day, for instance, tell me what you do at work or at home, or in this case, at school. Just on the internet? Yeah. Um, obviously email, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Uh, Do you have any favorite websites? Topdocumentaries.com, TED Talks, Facebook, Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> now finally, have you bought anything on your internet? How do you feel about buying things on your internet? Um, I do. I buy glasses on clearlycontacts.com. Okay, great. We're done with questions and we can start looking at things. And this is my poker face. So now we're through the, uh, the question period, and then now we're going to do what, we, what I call the acclimatization phase. OK, so great. Now we're done with the questions, and we can start looking on things. There's two things I want to add to that. First one is that you know, he demonstrates lots of different sites, and he says he's done zip cars, for example. That's the one that uh, will be in the video that's on top of YouTube that I send the link for. And he says he doesn't do that to show bad sites. In, in fact, the opposite, he likes user testing great sites, because he thinks, how can you make them better? Because he, he believes in the mantra that not, nobody's perfect. And the second thing is, uh, Steve mentions this too, but one of the questions is always like, how often and when you should you use usability testing? And people will say, you know, testing is just generally done late in, late in the game. I disagree. I think you should do usability testing right from the very day you start the project to the very day you finish. And then some people will say, well, what do you test then? That's usually the follow up question. You know what? You can test the paper prototype. So we talked about it a little bit earlier in one of the map sessions. The other thing too is uh, Steve talks about this too, and I love. I, I don't understand why more people don't pick up on that. You can test the competitor site. It's like somebody gave you an original prototype and left it on the street there for you to look at and public claim public view, right? It's a great learning vehicle. So some people will say, "Hey, I don't have really anything to test." Go if you have a competitor or some similar type of product test theirs and learn from their mistakes. That just gets you ahead of the game. OK, so great. We're done with the questions, and we can start looking at things. First of all, I'm going to ask you to look at this page and tell me what you think of it. What strikes you about it? Wh whose site do you think it is? And what can, what can you do here Where, and what it's for? Just look around and do a little narrative. You can scroll if you want to, but please don't click on anything yet. OK, so it's about the Food Network Canada. Uh, I guess you can browse the whole website, watch TV shows, I guess you can get some recipes, uh, it says there's articles, you can watch videos, TV, you can blog, there's a newsletter, community, 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to doing some specific tasks. I'm going to read each one to you out loud, and I'll give you a printed copy. In this case, I'll just read it out loud to you if you have any questions. I'm going to ask you to do these, these things without search. We'll learn a lot more about how well this site works that way. And again, as much as possible, it'll help us if you can try to think aloud as you go along. So the first one is, assume you're a big fan of Anna Olsen, if, even Anna if you're not. Olsen. Anna Olsen. Okay. And love all her shows. You're going to be home tomorrow all day and would like to determine when she's on first on the Food Network tomorrow. If possible, find out first, A, what TV series it is, since she has multiple TV series. Okay. B, what the episode, upcoming episode will be about and see what recipes will be shown if possible in case you want to follow along in your own kitchen. Couldn't hold it in. <laughs> you said tonight? Which are, which Sorry, the tomorrow. Tomorrow. So she is not at all on tomorrow. Okay, that's great. Number two, mm -hmm. so you've recently come back from a short vacation mm -hmm. to New Orleans. You had a great time and especially love Cajun food. Check the foodnetwork.ca for a possible main course dinner dish that you can try at home. Assume that you are looking at the following criteria. Okay? So the first one is how is it rated? You like fish over red meat and you liked anything that was blackened. So, um, so, so those are the three criteria. Okay, so you have a, a unique expression on your face. Is it something happened that you didn't expect? Um, yeah, for some reason when I click this, I thought it would bring me to another page, but then it's a drop down, I'm assuming. Um, so, some tips here. And then <coughs> don't worry too much about the script. I guess give you, we can, I can send out a copy of it later on, but, um, and you'll also hear as we do the, with that live demo here. But the idea is, the first hint that I can give you from real life experience is stick to the script. Stick to the script, stick to the script, stick to the script. Like I can't tell you about, you get into trouble when you don't stick to the script. It's to the point where like after the day you should have the script memorized because you've refined the script really, if you don't, if you've had the script, for example, I say oh, we're testing a medical website or something like that and you, you, you ad lib it and write, we're testing a, you know, a doctor website that, and you can get yourself in a lot of holes. The best thing to do, honestly, is stick to the script, especially the introduction. Other sites you can sort of ad lib a bit. Introduction, definitely try to stick. Try to remain neutral and calm. For some of us, it's a little difficult. Some, there, there are definitely people who are more optimized at personalities to do this, who are very laid back and have a poker face all the time. We really want to try to stay neutral because we don't want, it's like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we don't want to be our measurement to affect the process, right? We don't want the result to be, if I switch the person who's doing the interview, we would get a different result. That's at the level of, Gnosticism that we'd rather have. We have like have it fairly standard. So the best way to do that is to sort of remain calm, remain neutral. Things will go wrong, and pretend it's planned exactly like that. And that kind of helps the participant usually too. Lastly, uh, it's the one that we already talked about in tongue in cheek. If you use any of the terminology with your team, use the word test participant. Okay, they're not subjects. They're not being they're not being tested. <laughs>